Hi guys, welcome to another session of Bake at Home with Kim. I hope you're going well. I'm really excited because today we are going to get to do this amazing little set, which is for Mother's Day here in Australia, um, May the, oh, I think it's like the 14th or something like that. Um, I'll have to check, but it's second week in May. And so we're gonna make this gorgeous set, which is out of vanilla cookies, or you can do your gingerbread. Um, or chocolate, whatever you'd like as a cookie underneath, but I'm going to teach you the skills to be able to create um, their gorgeous flowers. I might take the lid off and I'll show you. So, we are going to oh, make something like this. See this gorgeous flower? I'm going to teach you the skills to be able to create this on top of your cookie so that you can give a gorgeous gift to your mum or that special person. On Mother's Day, we're going to learn how to do the leaves that will go underneath. And then we have, let's see, special Mother's Day jar that they all sit in and it says Happy Mother's Day at the bottom there. So I'll teach you those skills, how to make it, and then you can make it to your design, your colorings. You don't have to follow what I do. I just want to give you the technique so then you can go and do what you love. Um, the PDFs and the templates will be available um, with this. So you can print them off and then cut them out and then trace around, be able to cut them out so you've got the right shapes um, for a box. And I'll have the template uh, measurements for what box I've got these in just in case you'd like to put them in a box don't have to either you could just put them on a gorgeous platter if you're gonna serve it to your mum on Mother's Day um, but yeah you know it doesn't even have to be for Mother's Day you could change this up at any time to say happy birthday or miss you or thank you all of those types of things so let's have some fun and I'll show you how to make them let's get into it Okay, so we are going to grab the dough that you have made and just give it a little knead, not too much. And then we're going to pop it between the two baking sheets of paper. And you're going to just like lightly tap it down and then start rolling. And the best way to roll out dough is to take it from the middle really and then pull it out to the side. So I like turning the piece of paper around and around so that you get an even coverage so you're not just dragging it down one side so as you can see there if you just pop it from the middle and then push it out to the side towards you like pull it towards you then you will end up with an even um, layer and about that thickness so around about the quarter of an inch and then you're going to grab your little template which you've already cut out beforehand and use a knife and cut around the template. So this is going to be the jar that the flowers will sit on and that you'll write Happy Mother's Day on in the end. And the knife, yeah, it just needs to be a clean knife, like no, not serrated, just so that it goes through the um, cookie dough evenly. These are the round, now I've got cutters here, but you have circles on your templates. If you do have cookie cutters, it is a six centimeter and a seven centimeter cookie cutter. And I've got one seven centimeter and the three times six centimeter cookies, but we have those in on the template as well. And so then you'll just pull off the excess of the cookie dough and then you'll lift them onto a tray. Now I always, push up the paper from underneath and so that it kind of holds its shape. See the thickness there? And that's the type of thickness you need. You're gonna pop them on the tray together and we're gonna pop them in a 160 degree oven for about 10 to 12 minutes, just depending on your oven. And um, you'll just want it to be like light on the top, but a little bit browner on the bottom, just to know that they're cooked through. So I'm just uh, redoing this because we're going to cut out the leaves. So I have actually got a leaf cutter, but what I have done is drawn a template for you. So you can just trace straight around this. I needed to change this up because it was a gum leaf and I didn't want a gum leaf look. Um, so I've just cut around it and that's what I've done your template on as well. 
So you can just cut them all out at the start and then trace around it with your knife. Okay, so now they are out of the oven and they're looking nice and light, a little bit of a brown tin, tinge on the bottom. So they'll sit and be cool and we're gonna use the royal icing. So you remember it was really thick when we popped it into the container. So it's going to go in thick. Um, and we wanna kind of have it thick for the flowers that are going on the top of this. But we're gonna use a Mericolor gel. That's what my favorite here. You can use any gel uh, as long as it is water-based. Uh, if it's oil-based, it won't work. So just make sure your, your gel is water-based. I've just put in a couple of drops of the deep pink into the container at the moment and mixing that through. But I decided I wanted a bit more of a browner tinge to the pink. So I ended up putting just one little drop and I've just dropped it straight into the actual bowl here, but I've done a lot of years of practice. So if you think that you're gonna squeeze too much out, then just use a little scribe to put it on top of or toothpick and then pop it in. So I've just popped another couple of drops because I thought it was a little bit brown then. Never happy, am I? <laughs> so I wanted to make it pink, but more of a brownie tinge to it, just not brown. So as you'll see in the end, so I think I had four drops of the dark pink and then one drop of the chocolate brown. Okay, and then we're going to use the peach and a yellow I had in a different brand actually. So I'll put these all on, um, on below in the PDF so that you know what colors I've used. And the green is the avocado. So now I'm just gonna show you how we change it. I'm wanting to use this avocado for the leaf. And for the leaf, I need to have it more of a flow. They call it a flow. So it's very a lot bit runnier than what this is very stiff. So if I tried to pipe this onto a cookie, um, it wouldn't set properly. It would be all bumpy instead of nice and smooth. So we want it to be a little bit more runny. And so I'll just keep adding a little bit of water at a time and mix it through. I actually usually use the tap on my kitchen sink and I just put it on the finest little drip and I just drip it in, like I pull the bowl in and out from the actual drip. Um, but with this, you can still do it this way or you can use a little uh, syringe to drop it in there as well. Just have to be careful that you don't tip the whole thing of water, have an accident, you know, shake the hand and the whole thing goes in. If it does and you find yourself it's got too runny, you can always add a little bit more icing sugar into it to make it thicker again. So you can always correct it. So we're just gonna mix that all in. And then as you can see, it just like drops down and folds into itself. So as long as it folds into itself, it's going to be all right to put onto the cookies. Um, so what we do is pop them into a, dis, um, a reusable bag. Um, so we are, that one I think is a 12 inch, it's a loyal brand. And I'll have these links um, for you to link, uh, click onto if you'd like to buy some of these but um, I am just filling the bag. So I've, I don't know if you saw that I just tucked it into my hand on the inside. So I've got like a cup, but you can put this over an actual cup as well. So if you wanted to um, yeah, fill it without having to, cause I've got used to holding the bowl with one hand, um, you might find that too difficult. So if you just fold that over a cup and then you've got the two hands to be able to put it inside. We want it to be nice and runny. And then I'm just tying a knot in the end or you can pop elastic band or a clip on the end just to stop it from being pushed out the end when we go to pipe. So there we go. And then the next ones we are keeping thick and I'm going to use a 104 tip 
for all of these flowers. So I've got three of them there. And we're just gonna chop an end off the disposable bags. And we're gonna pop that tip with the end pointing out. And you need to make sure that it's fully out see there that it wouldn't quite go past the end so i'm going to chop a little bit more you can push it back in and then chop a little bit you don't want to make too big a cut because you don't want the whole thing to fall through the end but you want to make sure that the tip is out the end so there we go and then we fold that back so that i can add the icing inside i'm holding it again you can still do this over a cup if you find that a lot easier and so we're going to pop this in. So this is quite thick because we're doing a different design for the flowers. It's not going to be runny and smooth and running into each other. It needs to be thick. And again, I'm just tying that. And then we'll keep doing the same with the others. Um, this one is a blue. So I wanted to do the jar a light blue color. So I just put the tiniest bit in and it was very pale I just wanted a little bit more so I didn't want to squeeze a whole drop out I just wanted to do a little bit so I've just stuck the end of a cake tester in and as you can see it's only the tiniest bit but it makes a really lovely light blue color so this is a pale blue Americolor gel and I am because I'm doing the uh, large jar it'll be a runny consistency as well now what I've done here is I wanted to kind of show you what as you do runny as you're starting this using royal icing it will be a challenge for a while and I still have days where I either make it too runny or it's too thick and then I have to open up the bag and change it over and redo it so don't think that you're bad at it if you can't get it but I want to show you with the blue what the thick does later uh, but at the moment we're going to do the green leaf so we're just going to chop a tiny bit off the end of the bag so that you have enough to hold and push through and you need to grab with your right hand or left hand depending on what you are and actually pushing down from the top of the bag so and then you are going to follow and pull along the line of the cookie so you'll be pushing all of the time so you're pushing from the top and pulling around at the same time and then you're going to fill in. You can either just leave the outside line to dry for a little bit if you want to when you're first starting that seems to work quite well because when you go to fill it in with the runniness, the runny icing, it'll hold its shape. Um, but if you're game enough to just keep going like I have here, um, you just squeeze it out and make sure you squeeze it out quite thickly. Don't do thin because thin will make it harder to make a nice smooth consistency so try and pump it out as thick as you can and then you're going to use your little scribe just to move the icing so that everything is touching you might have a few gaps here and there you need to make sure all the icing is touching and then you can give it a tiny little shake just to make it a bit smoother As you can see, just be very careful and just give it a little shimmy. Um, so just be careful not to put your fingers in it. And if you do and a bit goes over the edge, you can grab your little scribe and go around and then wipe that onto a cloth. So again, pushing down from the top and pulling. And then I kind of touch the tip at the end and then pull, it's kind of like dragging the uh, icing but you've got to make sure that you keep pulling it if yours breaks in between that is okay you can start again from where it's broken and if it falls off the side a little bit you can grab your scribe and just wipe that off and just start from where you are again and then you'll be able to put the flood in the middle which is what we're doing right now so i'm putting the flood consistency which is a lot runnier 
and then that will make a nice smooth leaf like the one beside it. So remember, go and grab your scribe and then fill in the little gaps. Move it to the edges if you need to and then you can wipe around the edges if it doesn't look like it's very smooth. And then you can give it a little shimmy if you feel it needs it. So I'm just wiping off the tip and then we're doing another one. So we had three of them. So remember push from the top. So if you're wanting to have a border, I would say if you're doing this for the first time, I would just do the border on the three of them to start with and then go back to the first one that you put the border on and then fill it in because then it will hold the shape a lot more without it going over the edge. A little shake and then my thumb hit the edge a little bit so I'm just using the scribe to make it nice and smooth. Okay, so I wanted to show you the blue jar and we are going to do an outline again pushing from the top and pulling at the same time and I've kind of lifting it up a little bit so it's like a rope like you're kind of pulling a rope along touching the edge on the corners a little bit and then pulling up again but always pushing 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 and now I'm going to fill in and I'd if you can see, I have made this a bit thicker so I can show you the difference. And it, when you're making it too thick for a flood, it makes it a lot harder to shake it. It takes a lot of shaking effort to make it smooth. And then you can cause a lot of bubbles and things like that that you actually have to fix. So, oops, see, I was trying to shake it, couldn't, then I thought, no, I better shake it from the sides because I didn't want it to snap. So I have to do a very heavy shake to try and get it to go smooth. But as you can see, it's still a lot lumpy. And then we're going to just fill in the rest. But it took me a while to get that just because it was really thick. I, it took me a while. I had to pop a whole lot of bubbles. Um, I ran out of actual battery, so I don't think it filmed the whole thing. But I ended up with a lot of bubbles and it took me a long time to actually make it smooth. Whereas if you make a, a runnier icing, you'll end up having it done a lot faster. Okay, so now we are grabbing the 104 tip and you're going to pipe a little round circle in the middle, just to, so it's a little dollop. And then you're going to use the bottom of the um, tip is the, the fat end is going to be at the bottom and then you're going to do three strokes across like a like a bud in the middle. So you do one and then you're going to take it alternate. So you go from the middle of one stroke to the other side, in the middle to the other. And so you've got your fat end at the bottom and the thin end at the top. And now I start to loop up a little bit. So like a rainbow, you kind of come from the middle and then do a little arch with your um, piping tip. So touching, pushing, always pushing. It's very hard, this consistency, and it does hurt your hands for after a while when you've been squeezing it. So um, yeah, don't think there's something wrong if you're pushing really hard, it has to be firm. And so I'm going from the middle of one petal to the middle of the next petal. And then we just keep following that along with a little bit of an arch. Looks very pretty, doesn't it, when it's all happening? And then we want to fill the whole cookie. So we're going to go from the middle to the other side, the middle to the middle of the other one. And then loop it. And so what I'm doing now is actually starting to turn the tip out on an angle. So probably a 45 degree angle out towards the right so that the end of the leaf is hot, yeah, tipped right out to the side. So then you form a whole rose. Now this is the middle again. I'm just gonna do a little dollop 
and we've got the and that one didn't actually quite stick uh, stay there because it was quite stiff and uh, you just have to wiggle it around a bit and then we're doing those three strokes to make the bud in the middle and then we keep following that so you're going to go from the middle across the middle and so I'm squeezing and then letting go squeezing then letting go squeeze let go squeeze let go squeeze let go so the middle to the other middle of the other one now what we're going to do here is add a little wiggle on the outside so can you see as I'm piping I'm just wiggling the tip a little bit to make it a little bit wavy just to give it a little bit of a feature and we're going to go around and around until we fill the whole cookie Okay, so that's the end of that one. And then you've got two um, cookies with the flowers. But what I realized is if you can see, this is really quite runny still. So the actual petals are actually drying, like they're, they're falling into the other bit of the icing. So it wasn't actually thick enough. So I wanted to show you this because this is what happens sometimes. Um, you think it's very thick. Like I thought that was a really thick consistency. Like when you see, I have to cut the whole bag open. This is what we have to do sometimes. And as you can see, that looks very thick to me, but this requires it to be really, really thick. Um, because it needs to hold the shape of the petals. So I've added a little bit more icing sugar. I've taken off the other flour as well because I wasn't happy. And so as you can see, I just keep adding a little bit more icing sugar at a time. And it is really, really, really thick. Like it just all just stays as a clump on my spoon. Now it, this does make it harder on your hand. Um, so for me, when I'm actually piping quite a few of these, um, I can see why I'll get arthritis in the end. <laughs> um, but it does an amazing job. So make them very thick. I'm just adding more icing into that one as well. And then we'll see Yep, I'm going to make a little, I saw that it was a little bit shiny. So if you can take the shine away and make it just, yeah, very, very thick. As you can see. It's nearly like a dough consistency as well. And then I've added a bit more into the yellow one because I realized I hadn't bagged that yet. So I thought, well, I need to make that thicker as well. So we'll just keep adding the icing sugar and then mixing it through and then testing if it looks okay. But as I said, when we use royal icing, it takes a while to get used to the consistencies. Um, and sometimes you will have to rebag and you'll have to take it out and put more water in, or you have to take it out and put more icing in. And sometimes you think, oh, do I really want to do it? But it will make such a difference with your cookies. I have tried to do it with thicker icing before and then it was, took forever to get the lumps out and make it smooth. And I should have just changed it at the first, um, when I first realized it wasn't right. So there we go. See, it doesn't even come off the spoon. It's so thick. So we're going to rebag all of those with the 104 tip and get them all sorted again. Okay, so we're going to go back and do that flower again. I've just shown you I'm doing the fast motion at the start just to get it started. And then I'm showing you. So from the middle of one leaf to the next, you're pushing. Now this is a lot firmer, so you have to push very hard and sometimes the hand hurts and you're not sure if it's going to come out 
keep squeezing. The harder you can squeeze, the better. You need to keep the squeeze as you lift the uh, icing, the petal. So doing the rainbow look again, the arch from the middle of one petal and arching it to the next. And this will just take a bit of practice. So don't be like upset if you don't get it the first time around. You can just knock it off, like knock the icing off like I did with this one and redo it again and pop it in the end of the bag. Just practice as much as you can. If you don't wanna make all of these cookies and um, just to practice on, you can grab like a Mari biscuit packet from the supermarket and you can practice on the top of those. They're really good. But now I'm angling it out again, as I said, more 45 degrees so that I'm making the petals bigger and going out to the edge a bit more like a flower. So in the center, I've kind of done up and down a bit more. So like making it a big bud and then making that just like a flower when it's bloomed a little bit more, you have the outside flower petals floppier and out to the edge. the flower now it is a little bit wet looking on the uh, film here I think it's the lighting but it's a lot more defined in the petals than the other one was so now I'm going to use the um, apricot color and I've got the thick end at the bottom and making that little dollop in the middle again it just needs to be a dollop so it's like the center of the bud and then that's what you can wrap all of the leaves around. So now we will take a loop over and then a second one and then a third one to make the bud. And I've just, because it's thick, I'm pushing down at the end to, like as I let go, I have to push it down to stop it from just dragging out. So then going from the middle to the other one. If you find your tip is getting too like clunked up with stuff, wipe it. It's better to have a clean tip. Um, so just have a little uh, like a sponge that's wet beside you there or a paper towel or something that you can wipe the excess off and then come back and use a clean tip. So can you see there we're starting in the middle of one and then going across to the other with a little bit of an arch. And then as we go further out in the cookie, we'll start to do some wobblies. <laughs> some will, as you can see there, I'll be wobbling the tip a little bit to make it a little bit of an effect. And now I'll start to turn it out a little bit more too. These are the most difficult ones to do on the cookies. Like I'll show you some on the next um, cookies that we do that are flowers. I'll show you some other easier options you can do. But I know you can do this the more that you practice this and you'll be so proud of yourself once you've actually got the hang of it. So give it a little wiggle. And we wanna take it around the edge so that you can't see the cookie base at all.
so just keep going. And now I'm getting to the end of this bag too because it was a bit small. But I'm going to do the wiggles again. And I'm trying to push as much as I can out of the bag because it is getting to the end of it. I was like, please let me make it to the end so I don't have to make more icing. <laughs> As you get going doing some of these things, it's fun to start with, but in the end you're going, I wish somebody had just come along and make all of these icings for me so I was ready just to decorate, because it takes a lot of time to uh, um, get everything prepped, as you'll find out. So as you can see, I'm still doing that little wiggle and I have made it to the end. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I like the effect that the wiggle does. Um, so this is now is that yellow, the pale yellow colour and same thing, I've had the fat end down at the bottom and the, the thin end at the top and we're going to make the bud and then go around and do exactly the same thing and then we're going to have the nice wiggles at the end too. And then we're coming to the end of our flowers and look how pretty that looks. Look at those cute little frills. So we've got the four, cook four flower cookies and then we've had our leaf cookies drying on the side and we're going to put a pattern on those leaf cookies now. So I have, um, I'm using the same green that I had before and I've actually stuck my bag inside another bag and cut a smaller hole so that it just makes a fine line and then I've drawn like just going around so we start one end and drag it so we're pushing at the same time as dragging it along so then if it breaks remember you can go back and uh, cover it or you can like use your little scribe and scrape off a little bit and start again. So you can see start at the bottom pushing and I've just done a little bit of a like a arch there just to make the leaf a little like it's got movement. And then I've just put the veins on it so it looks like a leaf. How pretty. So that's our flower and leaf set. And then we just have our big blue jar. This is it here. So I am going to go around the edge. I have done the same thing here and popped the blue into another disposable bag and cut a smaller hole and then doing an outline. So same thing, pushing and then I've just done a squiggle. You need to make sure you are pushing on the bag as you're moving your hand because if you let go of pushing it will break. Um, so always put pressure and then we are going to just write happy Mother's Day and I just grabbed the yellow. Now I used the same thickness that was used for the flower which was quite thick. You don't normally use a thick icing for writing but it was still okay so you can do that. I just popped it into another bag and put the um, so I chopped off the end, so I chopped off the 104 tip and then I popped the whole bag inside another bag and I just cut a little hole to be able to write the happy with. Now I realised when I'm going to go write mothers, mothers, it's, I wanted to make a little bit more um, swirly pattern with it. Using something thick, it'll just keep breaking as I move it in that direction. Doing the um, happy in the solid writing 
um, in the bold writing, it was okay because we were just going from one corner to the next. But if you're wanting to do a bend, then you'll need to have an icing that is a little bit more runny. So I just popped a little bit more water in. You still want it kind of a stiff consistency because you don't want it to like, like, um, like melt into the cookie. You want it to be able to sit on top as an actual line. So, but you want it to be able to flow as well. So I'm just gonna cut a little tip at the end of the bag. And then I, I am just doing this freehand. You can use an edible pen and write it on if you feel that's a lot easier, or if you're very um, cookie oriented and you want to do lots of these, if you've got a projector, that is amazing because you can follow on a projector how to do the letters. But I've just done this by freehand and I'm sure you can too. Even if you just want to still do capital letters, that is fine too. You don't have to do a little cursive. Um, and then we're going to put the day with the yellow as well. And so that's just the thick one. So happy Mother's Day. Now I'm just evening up some of it with my little scribe. So you can use your scribe to fix up things. And then I've just put a little love heart on the side. So happy Mother's Day. And then there is your set. Here they are, happy Mother's Day. So you've got your leaves and you've got your flowers. And now we're going to pop them into a container and make them look gorgeous. I'm using shredded paper here. So you can find that online. I'll leave a link for that as well. Um, and then we're going to make these boxes look pretty. And I'll leave a link to the boxes as well and the sizing of that. Okay, so as you're positioning, you might find that you need to make um, underneath a little bit higher for the leaf to sit on or the um, flower. So I just added a bit more paper underneath so that it had something higher to sit on. There we go, we got one, two, three leaves. Um, and then you can start to work out how you want to set everything. So I realized that the flower and that needed something more to sit on. And so as you put it in, you'll just jiggle it around and think, mm, yeah, no, that doesn't look good, or that looks good, or we could move that around. So just have a little play until you're really happy with it. So if you're really happy with it, you're just going to pop the lid on and then we're going to put a nice ribbon on there to make it look like a special gift for mum. Now there's lots of fun making these things and it really does feel great when you can look at that and say, I created that. And I know that you can. It does take a little bit of practice 
Um, don't get frustrated if you can't get it the first time around. Just keep practicing. Um, the icing will just come as, uh, you know, you'll just, as the more that you do it, it'll become a lot easier to get the consistencies right. But just have a lot of fun and be really, you know, proud of yourself for giving it a go and then see what you come up with for mum. And happy Mother's Day to all those mums out there who might be giving it a go as well. Thank you.